Today on the Tiger Lacrosse Report, we'll review the Tigers' win over the Oregon Ducks. Get ready, fans. The Tiger Lacrosse Report starts now. Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Tiger Lacrosse Report. I'm your host, Ben Rosenbaum. Towson Tigers played host to the Oregon Ducks this past Saturday and came out on top 10 to 7. Let's take a look at the highlights. Oregon works it behind the net to Williams. Williams wrap shot and scored as she cuts in front of the net. 1-0 Oregon, 26-43 to go. Wraps around the far side. Passes up top, Samonte. Samonte driving in some traffic, shoots and scores. Natalie Samonte ties it up, 1-1. 25-39. Takes a step forward, shoots and scores! Caitlin Montalbano and she drops the stick with authority. 2-1 Tigers, 12-41 to go in the first. A absolute missile off the stick of Caitlin Montalbano. Williams trying to wrap around the near side. She does. Looking. Cuts in front. Wide open shot and goal. Shannon Williams puts Oregon up. 3-2, 27, 20 to go in the game. Telecamp's posted up. Brookhart wrapping around. Telecamp shot, score! 4-4, 4, 4 19, 39 to go. And whenever Carly posts up, you've got to know what's coming. They're going to try to lob that in front. Brookhart behind the net. Quick pass in front for Farrow. Touch shot and score! 5-4, Tigers, 18, 11 to go. Back out to Montabano. Montabano trying to drive forward. Pass in front, quick shot, Sam Brookhart and scores, 6-4, 1642 to go. It's maybe a step or two right of the goal. She goes forward, shoots, scores, Maddie Tribby puts him up, 8-4, 715 to go. Clock resumes on the whistle, Williams to Sukar. Quick pass in front for Bolt, lob to Pine, Pine tries to drop it in and she does. 10-5, 154 to go. Tigers are now 7-3 and, and ranked 13th in the nation. As always, I am joined by the head coach of the Tigers, Sonia LaMonica. Coach, thanks for joining us. Morning, Ben. How are you? So, first things first, before we get to the game. Yeah. That win is now 80 wins in your career here at Towson. Most winning its coach in program history. Uh, I've gotten to know you a little bit over the last <laughs> year and a half. i got to imagine you're, you're proud of this, you're happy with this, but you want more. Sure, yeah. I mean, we're all competitive, uh, honestly. I mean, that's, that's a really um, nice stat, I think. Um, you know, uh, to be put amongst some other great coaches um, who have been here at Towson um, is, is really special. Um, but yeah, we're sort of, you know, that's something nice I think you reflect back on in many, many years to come. But for now, um, we're just hungry to keep moving forward and to keep, keep winning, keep, keep getting this program moving in a great direction. So the game itself, 2-2 two -two at halftime. Uh, both your team and their team really traded some blows there early. And, yeah. Uh, defenses for both sides really stepped up. Yeah, yeah, the defensive um, play was, was certainly more of a battle um, there. I think uh, we were, as, as, as coaches, we were getting a little bit frustrated. Um, we weren't um, maybe having enough movement. We weren't um, moving the ball maybe quite as effectively as we would have liked. Um, and I think, you know, um, we, we weren't finishing some opportunities, you know, so, um, and then, on the flip side, though, you know, defensively, we're holding strong. I mean, Oregon's got a great, um, great offensive unit. They really uh, were testing us, and, um, you know, we were able to hold on pretty good there and keep them in check. But, um, yeah, it was definitely a, definitely a battle that uh, we talked through at halftime, and it took us a little bit to get going into that second half. And on that defensive side for you, Angie Benson, five saves in that first half. Mm -hmm. Those ended up being huge saves. Yeah. And Olivia Conti has an outstanding game. She's yeah. named CAA Defensive Player of the Week. So the two of them are yeah. uh, really stepping up big. Yeah, and, and I mean, it, it might not show on the stats, but um, Kelly McQuilkin just had an outstanding game. Um, you know, we had a lot of emphasis. We knew that um, some of their key play generated from behind the cage. Um, certainly not all of their looks, but a lot of it generated from there. And um, Kelly and both Kelly and Michelle Gilday, you know, really charged on making sure that they had good ball pressure. And 
that really made it um, a little easier for everybody else as well because of their great play and particularly Kelly because she was on that kind of more hot spot um, down low. But, um, you know, Tiana had four course turnovers. I mean, we had a lot of great play um, from that defensive unit, but we also had some some uncharacteristic errors, just some, some basic um, things that we missed that, um, you know, allowed, allowed some goals and later into the game too. Sticking with that defensive unit, uh, mm -hmm. I mentioned Conti named Defensive Player of the Week for the yeah. conference. Uh, Chenoweth, McColkin, Woffer have also all picked up some sort of CAA recognition. Yeah. There was questions about the defense following Nadia Poto and Emily Roth graduating, and Brianna Hamm to an extent. Yeah. Uh, but you reloaded yeah. quickly yeah. too. And I don't think it was ever a question of, oh, we're going to be in trouble because we don't have personnel. It was more of which personnel is it going to be? Which is the right fit? And we've got, um, you know, a great um, team. We've got a lot of um, great defenders. And the competition was really strong in the fall. Um, and we were sort of interested to see who was going to separate themselves. Um, so. I think that was more of it. Never really um, a, a question of concern, just what, who is going to fill those spots. And I think we, we found our answers and we can feel good about that. On offense, uh, we talked a little after the game about it. It was, you win the game obviously, but it was an uncharacteristic sort of scoring attack where usually we have one or two girls kind of take over and go yeah. off for three, four, five. Uh, yeah. Sam Brookhart, Carly Telecamp, each with two goals. Montalbano, Samante, Durante, Gillingham, Farrow, and Tribby all score one. Yeah. As a coach, would you rather one or two girls take that kind of scoring load over and everybody else kind of chip in? Or do you like having that spread out attack? I don't really think about that too much. We're more thinking about um, sort of the offensive principles and are we working well as a unit? Because at this level, it takes all seven people on that offensive end. If you've got one or two people who are not on the same page, particularly if you're playing um, a defensive system, um, such as a, a zone or a backer zone where it really um, calls for good ball movement. Um, you need everybody to be involved. Um, and so it's, it's never about just who fed the goal or who scored the goal. You know, it's, it's kind of like hockey. I mean, you almost wish sometimes you had that second assist as well because oftentimes that's what led to the assist and goal. Um, but, you know, I just, it is great to see awesome team play. And I think in the long run, that is better because individuals can get shut down and you need other players to have confidence to step up. And the more that they have all had that experience, then the easier it is for them to when their time or when their number is called or when the situation calls for them to step up, they're ready to do it. Caitlin Montalbano, CAA preseason player of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, she got off to a little bit of a slow start once she started getting tougher opponents mm -hmm. uh, in Penn State and, and, and so forth. Uh, she scores in the game uh, yeah. the other day. She's looking a little more confident than yeah. she seemed like she was maybe off her game at the beginning of the year. Yeah, um, you know, and I think sometimes, you know, um, she's, she's a junior going to junior year. I think, you know, she's somebody who puts um, a lot of pressure on herself. Um, she works hard, uh, you know, all of our girls work very hard. Um, and yeah, I think, um, you know, she's just continuing to come along. And I think the beauty is, um, you know, there, we have a lot of great players out there. I don't think you could ever sort of just say there's one person that is sort of the difference maker for our team. We have such a, um, a supporting cast where they're all involved and they all bring different um, strengths. And, you know, Caitlin brings some strengths for us, certainly in the midfield. I mean, she's very involved in getting the ball up the field, somebody that we rely on to do that. When she does that, we have success clearing. I think that is an issue. Um, from this last game that we struggled with due to some mental errors and we've got to just go back to um, some of the basics but there are areas of the field that I think um, Caitlin has been consistent and I think you know when you've got a lot of um, talent around you um, yeah you know that it, it calls for um, yeah you know doing different things and trying different things and um, you know Caitlin is, is a, an important cog in our offensive unit so um, I think she's just continuing to get stronger as the season goes on. That goal she scored the other—that was one of the hardest shots we've seen. The eight meter. Yeah, yeah off yeah, the free, but yeah. that was one of yeah. the hardest shots we've seen all year. Yeah, she, she's got a good. She's definitely got a good shot when she's got some time in room, and um, you know when she finishes well. I always love how she gets pumped. So yeah, we like to see more of that this season. All right.
That'll do it for us on today's episode of the Tiger Lacrosse Report. Join us next time as we preview the Tiger CA opener against the James Madison Dukes. For head coach Sonia LaMonica, I'm Ben Rosenbaum. Thanks for joining us, and as always, go Tigers.